All right, what do you say we put some electronics into this thing and give it some power? Bag F, kind of a funny thing that they call it Bag F because other bags have already F'd me in the past up to this point. But uh, we're gonna start with the motor mounting. And for this vehicle, for now, I'm going to use this 10 shock SC411. It's a, it's a new uh, kind of 550 sized four pole motor from ckhobby.com. They specify, or actually they give you a, a 12 tooth pinion for a, ah, 12 tooth pinion for a three millimeter shaft in there. This thing has a five millimeter shaft and because this thing has so much torque in it, I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a 14, mil, well, I've already put a 14 millimeter or 14 tooth pinion on there. And uh, it's kind of a guess, but we'll see how that works out. And then you've got this motor mount insert piece here, which is gonna be attached. I just need to figure out the best way to orient to this motor. And this is gonna get attached here, and then this becomes a slider, sort of like on the, the low C8 uh, buggy. So there, that is installed onto the motor. And you're just gonna be able to slide this right in here. I can just get the angle right. There it goes, and you use this little screw down on the bottom to adjust the, the mesh. All right, that feels good. And then to tighten it down, it's actually a different size. There's a set screw on the top here, and that'll just lock the whole thing in place. Make sure to use plenty of thread lock on both of these, both the, the adjuster down here and the set screw on the top. So hopefully this will not move anytime soon although I may need to move it myself once I get into testing because like I said, I don't know just what will be a good, uh, good selection of, of gearing just yet. As I change my gear, my bits over here. Next up, I get to set up my servo, my steering servo. I've got my Savox SC1258TG here, titanium gear, high torque unit. And uh, this just came out of an eighth scale buggy. I'm sure that this is going to have plenty of power. The servo mounting block comes out of plastic bag number four, once again. And again, things are a little bit dark in the instructions here, but hopefully I can get this right. Phillips head, self tapping screws here. So much for being all hex hardware, huh? Now they want you to route the Servo wire, don't worry about this black part, but it's all just, it's all the same. It's just some Sharpie marker. They want you to route the servo wire underneath the drivetrain. And there's a little hook on this piece that includes the, the insert, the little cup that uh, gives a little extra lower clearance for the spur gear. There's, there's a hook right there. Uh, the problem with it is that uh, there's no clearance on the side for it to allow you to insert these wires. So, Got to kind of get in there and just bend that thing up on the edge carefully. Get under there, get under there. Got it halfway. Let's see if I can work it. There we go. Okay, that wasn't so bad. So this is good. And then on the other side, there's a little slot that it actually fits down in. So this is doing a good job of keeping your servo wire away from moving parts of the drivetrain. I appreciate that very much. When I tighten this down, it didn't quite work the way that it should. Uh, right down in there is the point. There's uh, two screws that come up from underneath and it's symmetrical front and back. And you can see that there's actually a little bit of a gap towards this side. There's a little bit of an angle there. It's because there's not enough uh, spacing underneath this post, this vertical portion. So the, the servo itself, the body of the servo is actually resting against this plastic guard here. Uh, ideally, when doing this step, you might want to add an extra spacer in there just so that this sits in there a little bit better. That's just, again, a, another small little bit of, of, of poor checking. Uh, Savox servos are same, same size, same dimensions as, as Futaba. They're extremely common nowadays. They should have tested this mount with one of these. This turnbuckle that makes the drag link to the servo barely gets threaded into the ball ends at all. I do not appreciate that. Uh, it's, it's 
sticking out quite a bit so there's not a whole lot of thread in there hopefully that will not be something that will uh, just end up pulling out all the time if it does i'll look for longer ball ends to replace these little super short ones that they have on here a bit of good news is that they do give you all of these servo horns that you could possibly need it's got the the three major sizes so that's good stuff of course always make sure you've centered your servo first before installing a horn mine's good to go and this is fitting on there with a little bit of firmness which is good and now i can already see that that was simply a mistake in the instructions thankfully that was a mistake in the instructions if i try to drop a screw down here it's off by center is probably off by five to six millimeters so i do get to tighten this guy up now a little bit thread those in a little bit further instructions say to use a 25 millimeter length uh, inside edges looks like about uh, 20 20.5 20 to 21 is a better ballpark it'll, it'll still need a little bit of adjustment afterwards but that brings it in closer looks like at full lock steering this link right here crank just touches the uh, the servo itself one of the wings so that's that's kind of cutting it close but it looks like it's the motion is actually being stopped by the the inside when going turning to the left by the left side knuckle so hopefully that will not be a problem now i get to assemble together the the battery strap battery mount so that's that's going to be an interesting thing because this was a very uh, very innovative feature that they kind of talked up a little bit this should be correct now this may have been my mistake may not have so just be on the lookout i think that these two main pieces the lower pieces may have been confused may have been swapped uh, the part numbers three and four on the part tree they came came from uh, just look out for that if you're following along this and doing your own build might have just been me messing up but this is the basic idea here is you get these straps that come around and then they hook over and then the just the the tightness will just hold it in place so you can just kind of pull this down and let it go and it'll just open up one on each side to hold your battery down before tightening these down because they've got a lot of play a lot of wiggle room for forward to back motion be sure to actually put a battery in there of the size that you're normally going to use so that you get a good uh, you get a good template for where those screws should go through and it looks like it's going to be the most tight orientation of all of them to just squeeze down on a two cell uh, hard cell hard case all right looks like those should be good and this should work by just Pull down and let go. There it goes. Pull down. That one's a little bit tighter for some reason. There we go. Pull down and let go. Yep, that should work. Holds it in nice and tight. Pull down. I guess taking it off is a little bit harder. Pull down, let go. Pull down, let go. Take this out for now. They give you a couple of tailored ESC hold down plates. And this one here is for the, the Novak Havoc sc series this one here is for the castle sidewinder series and i have a castle mamba max pro so those aren't going to work i'm going to use the universal mount which just gives you a flat plate and you can just stick, stick something right on there god those screws are just too short they should go in further they start to strip almost immediately that's unfortunate i'm not yet positive exactly how I'm going to set up my switch where I'm going to put my switch I might depending upon how difficult it is to access it I might just leave it on all the time and use my my battery lead as the main on off and I wish I had a short sensor wire or a sensor cable to use here but unfortunately I'm short on short cables so this one's gonna to have to loop around but that's there and then we've also got some some little clips that will go around the outside i'll turn this around there are some clips that will 
help to manage this cable from the ESC out to the receiver box. That was actually very, very useful because this, these, uh, these 10 shock motors come with crazy long motor leads and I have a bad habit of not trimming them down because I go through so many different vehicles that I never know when I'm going to need a really long lead so I just leave them full length but these clips really help to manage all that by just keeping it in place and now I'll just use probably a zip tie down here to keep this whole bundle together and hopefully that'll keep everything out of the way of the roll cage but I will, I will deal with that when that time comes. Okay, I just did you a solid favor right here by cutting out about 20 minutes of wire routing fun. Because I'm using this Castle Mamba Max Pro, uh, I did hook up a, you know, with, with a decent servo on there, I did hook up a BEC, an external BEC to that and rerouted a bunch of stuff through there and there's some fun getting everything taken care of in the receiver box area. When you build up the receiver box, it does become, if it's not completely waterproof, it's darn near waterproof because this thing, it, this thing is definitely well sealed up from all edges. And if you put a little bit of grease on the, the foam spacers that they give you uh, to go around the wire inlets, it can, I'm sure that it will get completely, completely uh, waterproof. But at the very least, it's splash resistant and very dust resistant. So your receiver is going to be in good shape in there. You actually do attach the receiver to the top, not to the bottom. The bottom isn't even flat. You attach it to the top and fits in there okay. And then you just got to get that last little step of getting all the wires to agree with you, which is much easier said than done. Once that works out, this thing is just about ready to roll.